Welcome to my latest video looking at railway lines in Shropshire and the surrounding area. On this journey I'm looking at the old railway line that went from Whitchurch in Shropshire to Chester in Cheshire. Let's first of all have a look at the route and we've got the uh, Whitchurch up to Crew line here and we can see branching out westwards the Chester line so it goes past the northern part of the town and it works its way up to Grinley Brook on the Shropshire Cheshire border. We then work our way up to Malpas and we can see that the station is actually outside of Malpas, some way outside in fact. Then the line works its way up to Broxton. From Broxton we work our way up to Tattenhall and once again the station is outside of the town. From Tattenhall we work our way up to the actual junction with the Chester to Crewe line and you can see we're about two or three miles from the centre of Chester. The starting point for this journey is Whitchurch station and the locations on the beginning of the line up to Grindley Brook. Well I've arrived at Whitchurch station and I'm looking north. Now if we go and look over this fence we can clearly see where the trains departed on their way to Chester. It's fairly overgrown but we can still see the platform edge and where the track lay. Well if I look at this picture from 1954 we can see that the station actually had four platforms. And it's this one on the right that we're just looking at now and here we can see a train ready to depart for Chester. Well, if we scan up, that's exactly where we are now. And here's the bay. So as the train departed from Whitchurch Station going north, it went up to about where that bridge is in the distance, and that's where the track bared to the left on its way to Chester. Now I've zoomed in a bit now so we can see the bridge a bit clearer, and the branch of the line to Chester was around where that bridge is now. Well this area of grassland where the track started to Chester is actually private property so this is probably about as close as I'm going to get to the junction. Well I've arrived at Grindley Brook Staircase Locks and as the picture shows this is a three step lock. As we come north from Grindley Brook Locks we come to this great location and we can see we can pick up the railway. This viaduct marks the border between Shropshire and Cheshire. We've got Cheshire on the left and Shropshire on the right. The county border now follows the canal for quite a long way. Well I've managed to make my way to the top of the bridge and I'm looking south towards Whitchurch. I stand here with one foot in Shropshire and one foot in Cheshire. So as I go from Shropshire and turn to the left we look at the route into Cheshire. And the railway now comes up to Grinley Brook Holt and on to Malpas. And the sign on the bridge shows evidence that there was a railway here at one stage. And here we are looking south and the halt was just to our left here. 
Nothing left of it now, of course. It was actually only a wooden halt. It wasn't actually even an original station on the line. The halt was added in 1937, opening on the 4th of July, and was almost certainly ripped up when the track was lifted. And if we come to the north of the bridge, we can clearly see the path that the track took. From this location, we have about two miles up to Malpas. We're now making our way up to Malpas and Malpas Station. And Malpas Station, as you can see, is located here. It's actually some way out of the town. Well, I've reached Malpas and you can see the platform and the station in the distance there, including the canopy posts. This is about as close as I'm going to get, though. And here's the view from the west side, so this would have been the station yard. Still in use this, not a private home I don't think, it looks like a business. But as you can see from this fence, this is as close as I'm going to get. I can just see through the windows a sign saying trains to Chester. There you can just see the sign through the window. Now moving north to Broxton is our next port of call and according to the map this area here where the station was there's nothing remaining. Well there's a big car park here and a snack bar and I'm going to make my way there and see what might be left. Well this area here where I'm looking north is the site where the old station would have been. It certainly looks very different. Well, it's changed beyond all recognition. There's no signs here now that there was ever a railway station. And if I pan north, neither is there no station. The old railway bridge is gone as well. Well, are... just coming a little bit closer to that road bridge, I can see that the whole layout of the road itself has changed. The road's actually levelled out slightly, and uh, you'd have to look hard to find evidence of a bridge here. Well, here's the scene at Broxton from 1960, and that scene is so unrecognisable today. This picture shows the station just after the closure of freight traffic, already getting overgrown. By 1973, it's looking very derelict. This picture was taken at the same time, but from the other side. Sadly, there's no trace of the station anymore. This is an interesting picture showing the Broxton cheese train in the early 20th century. Now I've arrived here just outside Tatton Hall and this is the site of Tatton Hall Station. Well here's that view today and it's somewhat disappointing as it's clearly become very overgrown with trees. Just about see the station through the gap in the trees there in the middle of the picture. This is the view from the south and uh, not a lot of evidence was ever a railway there. Now we can see the station a bit better. And we can still see the telegraph wire pole intact. Still got an old station lamp here. I've got three pictures of Tattanel Station, all showing different stages of development. This is the oldest picture and probably dates from early 20th century. This picture dates from 1978, with the track bed still very clearly visible. By 2006, we can see a huge development on the station building and a lot of work's been done to it, and the track in the distance has now become overgrown. And here's the east side and the main entrance to the station.
Now I'm trying to get as close as I can to Tattanore Junction and we can see Tattanore Junction is there. So I'm going to make my way to this bridge here which is about as close as I'm going to get. Well I've just arrived at that bridge and I'm looking westwards towards Chester and Tattanore Junction was about half a mile in the distance there. Well the existence of the old line is quite evident here and we can clearly see the track moving north westwards from here and the crew Chester railway line is just there in the distance by them trees. If I take a pan southeast we've still got a small viaduct crossing the old line. nearly there, just a couple of hundred yards from uh, Tattanil Junction. And what, if I pan to the right, we can see the line just there in the distance. And I'm panning now across towards the crew side, and now panning back towards the Chester side. And the line is the other side of those bushes right in the middle of the picture. Well, this picture from 1975 shows what Tattanil Junction used to look like. And I'm only standing about 300 yards away from this scene, behind the signal box. Sadly, there's no evidence of this signal box today. Well, as I pan now southeastwards, this is the very first stretch of the line on its way from Tattanel Junction to Whitchurch. Now I've made my way to the last station on the line before Chester and that's Waverton and once again the station is slightly out of the town and it's here on this bridge here that we can see on the map. Well this is the station today from the uh, southeastern side. Well I've got several pictures of Waverton station and this is the oldest from 1908 and clearly shows the station buildings on both sides of the track. This picture from 1971 shows a class 40 pulling a train from Blackpool to Euston. The scene in 1978 looks pretty similar. In 2007 it's starting to get a bit more overgrown and here we can see a steam special on its way south. And this is the view from the railway bridge looking towards Chester. And we can clearly see the uh, old station yard still evident. The end of the line, the magnificent Chester station. Inevitably the use of the line declined after the Second World War for the same reasons that all the other lines were affected by as well. The passenger numbers dropped and eventually all passenger services ceased in 1957. Freight services continued until 1963 and the track was lifted in 1965. Closure of course was inevitable but it's left its history and its mark on this part of Shropshire and Cheshire and certainly is a big part of that historical jigsaw that is Shropshire Railways.